Hi guys, <laughs> my name is Jan and I'm from Ripen. Uh, so Ripen is an online collaboration platform that, uh, for experiential learning uh, between post-secondary students, uh, educators, as well as uh, industry partners. So right now, for most of you, when I speak of experiential learning, I'm sure most of you are probably thinking about um, you know, co-ops, internships, those kinds of learning by doing type things. Um, the one big problem about those are like they, are, they aren't very scalable. Um, not very many companies can afford a lot of interns. This leaves a lot of students, uh, hundreds, even thousands if you count for everyone in Canada as well as the US, hundreds of thousands of students who don't, who, who, who are at a disadvantage and then at the same time companies, employers, um, they're missing out on a lot of talent. So what we've done is we've created a platform that allows all of these parties to co-create, manage, and assess um, what we like to call micro-experiential opportunities. Um, uh, and essentially, through these, um, our aim is from these very small experiences, we hope to create a big um, social impact. So let me kind of just dive into the platform here and show you two different types of micro-experiential opportunities that we have. Um, the first one are, is assignments, and then the second one is um, uh, skills challenges. So let me just, okay. All right, can I see that? Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm here on the platform right now. I'm on the profile of an individual named Joe Smith. Joe Smith is the CMO of an organization called Technovan. Technovan is a monthly meetup that brings together Vancouver's techno leaders, innovators, and enthusiasts. Sound familiar? No, I really worked hard on that joke, but okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, so um, Joe is the CMO of this company and he's looking to essentially um, grow the number of attendees who come out to the meetups every single month. Um, the one problem is he's a part of a small and scrappy team. Everyone's pretty strapped for time and resources right now. So what he can do instead of, you know, hiring just one co-op to kind of push all this work to, he can hop onto the platform and then do an assignment. So an assignment is essentially a project that a student does in class, um, sort of similar to um, a live case study or maybe uh, like a student consultant kind of project. Uh, professors come on here, which is our assignments library, and for example, um, a professor at here, the, he's teaching a supply chain class. He comes on to the platform, says, I'm teaching a supply chain class. Is there an organization out there who has a supply chain challenge or an opportunity that my, my students can help work out with you? So um, let's get back to Joe. Joe is based in Vancouver. So let's actually just narrow it down to schools just in, the, just in BC. He wants to work locally. Perfect. Quite a few schools out there, um, a few very familiar ones, hopefully a few guys know who these schools are. Um, again, so Joe wants to increase the number of attendees to his monthly meetups. Uh, this is probably, of course, a marketing type project. He wants to uh, kind of learn a little bit more about his attendees, kind of grow that audience. So uh, perfect, there's a project right here with SFUBD. They're, do, uh, they're doing a strategic marketing consultancy project. All he has to do is kind of click on that project. Uh, or assignment rather, learn a little bit more. Okay, so he'd be working with third year students. They would be in teams of four. So as opposed to just having you know that one co-op, one intern, he's working with four really great students right now. Uh, he can learn a little bit more about the project. Uh, what are these? What can these students do? Oh, perfect. Um, they're going to do some market research. They may survey uh, potential customers and talk with focus groups. This is exactly what Joe wants to do. Um, he can just kind of keep going, take a look, uh, le learn a little bit more about the project, make sure it's a good fit. Uh, he'd be working with a professor. His name is Dave Thomas. This is a real professor, by the way. Um, and all he has to do right now, uh, if he thinks this is a great fit, all he has to do is click that orange join as an organization button, and that would lead him to the project scope creation kind of process. This process usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes for most individuals, so just for the sake of time, I'll skip this. But essentially, it's just, he'll be creating a very high level overview of what his um, project is. So, you know, just saying, hey, I need some market research help on understanding who my customer, or I guess my attendees are. Um, he would create that, he would submit it. The professor, Dave Thomas, would be able to take a look at that project scope, Dave has a very quick conversation with Joe, saying, hey Joe, I saw your project, let's talk about it a little bit further, make sure it's a good fit. If both, uh, if both guys say, hey, this is a really great fit, let's move forward, um, Dave will then um, kind of, Dave will connect Joe with his students. So that's one way to go about it. Again, this is a collaboration platform, so it can actually go the other way. Um, Joe could post the project himself, say, hey, I'm 
need some help with some market research, and then Dave can go onto the platform, kind of go through, and then see Joe's project at Technovan and say, hey, um, I'm Dave Thomas, I'm teaching a marketing class in, at SFU, I want my students to collaborate with you. So yeah, that's, that's one micro experience there, which is the assignment. And then I'll quickly show you another micro experience that we have, which are skills and recruitment challenges. So uh, I guess the best way for me to show you this is just by giving you an example. So skills and recruitment challenges are essentially opportunities for um, students to show their skills to employers. So for example, we have this one project with Deloitte Digital. Deloitte Digital very recently did three different challenges through the Ripen platform. Um, in the, uh, so for a bit of context, Deloitte Digital, they were trying to grow their design team here in Vancouver and Victoria. As opposed to the traditional, hey, um, we're on Indeed, give us resumes kind of process, they put up three different challenges on our platform that a typical designer at the, in their team would kind of um, would kind of face on the day to day. For example, this project is helping uh, is redesigning BC Ferries ticket purchasing experience. So through this challenge, students uh, kind of went in and then um, did quite a variety of things. Did a lot of research. Um, at the end, uh, students submitted user uh, user personas, user journeys, some wireframes, some high hi-fi and lo-fi prototypes. So quite a variety of things. And then at the end, Deloitte Digital was able to. Um, identify 10 really great students, really uh, not just students, but also graduates, um, identify them, they, they, uh, they had an interview, and then at the end, just through this process, they ended up hiring two of these really great students for full-time roles here in Vancouver. Um, and yeah, that's, that's essentially um, a very uh, a skills and recruitment challenge there. Um, and yeah, I guess Ripen, we are uh, we're a social enterprise. Right now, we are we work with about three thousand different uh, industry partners and about hundred of over one hundred thirty different um, post secondary schools, so colleges and universities across Canada and the U.S. Um, we've built this platform to kind of help everyone collaborate, work together to help close the skills gap, reduce graduate underemployment, and most importantly, kind of help shape the future workforce of the world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I like how hard you're cheering. I didn't get that from you, so I'm slightly jealous. Um, anyone have questions for Jen about Ripen? Um, okay, so I guess our business model. So we have three different users. Am I, am I allowed to say the business model? Yeah, okay. Uh, so we have three user types on the platform. Students, students, I mean, you're, the students or graduates already pretty disadvantaged, so we're always going to make it free for those guys. Uh, schools purchase a light, a light, or a, I guess a portal to the platform. When they purchase a portal, professors can come in and kind of post as many different projects as they'd like, or assignments, I keep mixing up those two. And then finally, industry partners, so businesses, organizations, anything like that who want to work or collaborate with the students, they purchase uh, a subscription subscription to the platform to kind of work with our whole network of schools. How are you, uh, how are you raising awareness in industry of the opportunity to participate? Like how do you find industry partners? How do you, how do you onboard them to the program? Um, I guess two parts there. First thing, how do you find industry partners? Honestly, just hustling. <laughs> and then how do, we, <laughs> how do we onboard them? We actually recently grew our client success team. So Devin up there, she's actually looking for coordinators. So if anyone wants to join our client success team, she onboards our, all of our industry partners coming in who purchase a subscription. That way they could look, I mean, experiential learning, especially micro experiential learning is fairly new. So uh, she kind of helps everyone with the platform, learn a little bit more, uh, and then kind of um, connect you with uh, Pro, or assignments and schools and students that, that fit your needs. So if you're a student on the platform, uh, can you see who the other people are that are doing the assignments? Uh, as in other students? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. <laughs>